How y'all doing? I know I look like a dork, don't I? <laughs> you didn't have to say it out loud, but I agree. I, I do look ridiculous in this. But anyways, guys, I have in my hands here a pre-release set of smart glasses that seems to want to compete with the likes of Google Glass or Snap Spectacles and all those brands that have been out the past year or two. But I think this might be its own beast. This, my friends, and let me try to pull this in closer, is the Moxicam Super Hexa Vision. And this is by no means a full review of the device. It's more like a sneak peek, really, because Moxicam sent this to me a while back, wanted me to get my hands-on first impressions on it before they push it onto Indiegogo. So if you're the least bit curious about what this is and what it can do and what it will do possibly in the future, you need to watch this video. Let's do this. <laughs> A little heads up before we proceed. There is currently only one function activated on this device, which is the camera system right here. I was trying to get the translator and recognition functions to work, but in the end, I was told by Moxicam that those are still a couple months away. Now, powering this device is an 8-core Qualcomm Snapdragon SoC with an UI based heavily on Android. The display itself right here, let me pull this back a little bit. Uh, the display in here is a Sony Micro OLED that runs at 1800 nits, pretty darn bright, visible brightness, and a dense 3281 PPI. The screen itself sits on this pivot tube that can adjust up to like 15 degrees in either direction, which is nice. The camera itself is a dual camera setup. It's periscopic, a 50 megapixels main cam with an 8 megapixel zoom lens. Moxicam says there is an optical image stabilization and electronic image stabilization split. My guess, based on my experience with it, is the EIS will only kick in after the 5x optical zoom runoff. And yes, there is 5x optical zoom, guys, and also 10x digital zoom for a combine of 15, which is pretty darn impressive. We'll check out the quality of photos and videos later on in the show. Onboard storage is 32 gigs, so something to bear in mind there. There's no speakers or microphones as far as I can tell. These ports here are for venting. Uh, there's a power button right there. Uh, the arms don't bend, by the way, which is unfortunate, but the frame itself is pretty darn flexible as it is. Right here is the cradle to for your, right now as it is, UV lens, or if you want to swap out to prescription glasses, you can do that as well. You can also use it without, by the way, uh, and just use the nose support or the bridge support right here. I wish the plastics right here were matte or with some kind of protector because right now, just after a week, I barely just, I don't really manhandle this. I've taken care of it, but I can see some scratches right at the top right there. So Moxicam, if you're listening, make this matte or something like that or make it stronger. Uh, battery life on this, I've gone around during my time with it, 2.8 hours with mixed photos and videos. And if you plug it into its proprietary charger, it kind of sort of does a quick charge. I've seen it work. Uh, 30 minutes will get you back up to about 80%, which is pretty impressive. Uh, right here is the, the, on the right side is the touch pad. Right here, when you pull in and out, this is zoom. When you tap it, that's to like enter or accept. When you swipe up and, up and down, as it is right now, you just swap between camera modes from video uh, to photo and such like that. Now, this side, there's nothing here. There's the Super Hexa branding. For pricing, um, I'm not 100% sure yet. They say it's somewhere around the range of six to $700. So I think it's more like a four or $500 device really, to be honest, but uh, it is what it is. There's an LED status light right here, which is nice. So if you're filming someone, uh, like people will know you're filming, this will blink. Um, I wish there was also more protect protection for the camera lens itself or camera shell itself, like maybe inset a little bit. That would be nice because if you accidentally drop it, that's pretty much done for. Allow me to say this again. This is not a full on review, guys, since this is not even a final product. So it just wouldn't be fair. But this is gear up. Nonetheless, after using this for about a week, here are my top likes and dislikes. Um, the camera autofocus is bloody competent, I'll tell you what. It seems to have a one area focus setup. And I thought when I came into this testing cycle, it would be a lousy camera because it has no name or anything. But the focus is fast, even in moderately low light. There is no focus tracking, but man, this thing locks on to things pretty quickly without too much initial hunting, sometimes none at all, even at maximum zoom. Another area where the lens package surprised me is zoom. Optical zoom goes all the way up to five times and then hybrid zoom takes over and then pushes that out all the way to 15 times. 
Images for the most part at most zoom levels, except maybe like 15 times are clear and have pretty solid contrast as well as pretty accurate color science. Um, uploading photos and videos, be it individually or in bulk, is as painless as say, as doing it on my DJI Mini 2. And also just for fun, after this, I've included some samples, including some comparing the Super Hexa with a Pixel 7 Pro. And I know that's not a fair fight, but I thought it'd be fun to test the zoom, especially on both of these and see how they compare. And I have been surprised on some of the shots. The outdoor visibility of the Sony display is pretty darn fantastic. Now, fall in Maine doesn't have the clearest or sunniest of days, but there were thankfully a couple of sunny days this week where I got to push the 3000 max nits a little bit. One word of advice, don't go pointing this directly at the sun, it just doesn't work very well. But other than that, it is pretty darn solid. The brochure says that the beauty of the Super Hexa Vision is in its hands-free operation. Um, I don't think that applies to taking photos because you still have to reach up and tap the uh, side arm right here all the time. But for videos, I feel it's a pretty good setup if you're wanting to shoot things like unboxing videos or something like that at 1080p. Just be mindful that battery life is around an hour when recording videos, so you better have your script buttoned down. Now, on the flip side, what are some of the things I wish the Super Hexa could do better? Well, how about some kind of diopter adjustment for the display itself, especially for near or far-sighted people like me? And sure, they say the magnetic lens cradle, that's what it's for, you install your prescription lenses in it. But think about this, it's an added expense and also adds quite a bit of front end weight to an already bulky device when this thing is installed. And speaking of disabilities too, it would have been nice if users had the ability to swap both of these modules around like on the opposite side like this, because think about it. What if I was blind in my right eye? Because as it is, this product would be pretty darn useless to me. You probably saw this coming a mile away, and so did I. I'm gonna have to ding the Super Hexa Vision big time for its bare bones functionality. Especially when you're this close to a crowdfunding launch with just a camera and a supposed translator, a 10 second flashback mode, I haven't been able to get any of those to work, as well as other promises coming down the line. If I was a potential backer, I'll be less than inclined to fund the project. It does come with a territory with AR and smart glasses, but just like all the other models out there, the Vision could use some major slimming down. The company humorously shows a lot of pictures of their models using these glasses like out in public in the mountains or hiking or something like that. But let's be honest, you're gonna stick out like a sore thumb with this on and not in a good way either. 
I mean, if you wore this to a jeweler's convention, you'll blend right in, but otherwise, kids everywhere will be calling you a creep in no time flat. And it is also kind of ironic that for vision glasses, my peripheral vision is severely blocked by the side modules. You know, as much as it sucks to shoot a video of a product that really doesn't have much to it just yet, this concept really got my attention. From the camera abilities, I was pretty darn impressed with this thing. The processing power, also I was shocked by that one, as well as the promise of developer support for different kinds of apps. And yes, I know, what can I say? I'm sometimes a sucker for uh, fringe tech like this, but Moxicam wanted my honest opinion, so here we are. The truth is, the hardware feels like it's in beta form, while the software, aside from the UI, feels like an alpha build. And of course, I'm not gonna be scoring the Super Hexa Vision because it's not a final product, but ultimately, I hope this video helps you somewhat, or Moxicam, to improve their product. I have accepted my fate that this video is probably going to be a dud, yes. But I enjoyed making it, I hope you enjoyed watching it for all eight of you who actually watched this video. But thank you so much again. If you'd like to see more videos like this, if you'd like to show your support, mash and kill the subscribe button down below. Share this with your friends. Thumbs up if you like it. Comment nicely down below. Visit me on Patreon and use the super thanks button down below. If you'd like to buy me a cup of coffee or tea or something, that would be super fun. And also remember to do something loving and kind for somebody in this world, guys, because guess what? If you haven't seen the news, the world needs it more than ever, and it starts with you. I love y'all very much, and I'll see you the next time. Peace out.